What's going on, Jerome's? So I, I understand that I'm like kind of like the football guy, like the Vikings guy, right? But if memory serves me correctly, didn't the Denver Nuggets win the NBA title just last year? Like, didn't they hoist that Larry O'Brien trophy? Didn't Jokic have all those funny interviews and stuff like that or look very unimpressed after winning? Well, it wasn't that the case. So you would think that with the team still young and intact would have a championship pedigree, right? And, you know, the fact that the, the Wolves whooped Denver's ass in game one, well, not an ass whooping, but convincing win uh, on the road, that Denver could not come away from the two games at home and the best of seven series, empty-handed. You you think that's that's the case, right? So, it seemed like such a Minnesota sports thing to happen that you know Rudy Gobert, prop, props to him, uh, and and his wife, first child. Uh, everyone sounds like they're doing fantastic. Uh, but you, you'd think that it was fate that the best defensive center in the league would be missing the game for the birth of his child. Fully understand, family first, and you would think that Jokic the alleged MVP and the championship Denver Nuggets in a essentially a must win game two would be able to put the bang thing on the wolves. But looky, looky, here comes hooky. Honestly, this first half was the most destructive and impressive half of basketball I've ever seen the Timberwolves play. And I love that Cat got a chance to shine, but overall, like th- this game was an homage to Rudy Gobert. It's like, hey, w- we understand family first, but we're gonna put on an absolute defensive clinic without uh, uh, against a center who is the alleged league MVP, and we're, we're gonna do it without the best defensive center in the game. Absolutely insane, absolutely bat bleep insane, uh, Jokic. Just looked tired and inefficient again, and it was just, just glorious, man. It's just, I, I understand the whole thing about Minnesota sports, but allow yourself to dream a little bit. Ten more wins gets this thing done, and six playoff wins in a row, all very impressive. So, foe, 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 foe is still in play. That's right. Also in play. So, uh, you know, work with our guy Casey Vitelli over at ProLine Mockups. So they do an awesome thing where once you knock out another team, you absorb their style of jersey. I, I can't wait to get my mitts on this one. Uh, so the Ant jersey, you can get it stitched. It's going to look glorious. The Valley, but it's Twin Cities. And if you use promo code PurpleFTW, 10% off your order. A whole fistful of Jerome's are already ordered already. Uh, Casey's over the moon. You guys are the best. Uh, link is in the bio. Just just go and get it, man. And also, again, not putting the cart before the horse, but he says he's got something cooked up pretty nice for uh, if and when the Wolves do win this series. All right. Also, we need to talk about punk-ass biatch Jamal Murray. So he, he, he chucked a heating pad onto the floor while the game was in play because he was being all pissy and stuff. And he, so he didn't get teed up because the refs didn't know that he threw it. But he needs to be suspended for games three, maybe even game four, because that's inexcusable. It's irresponsible. You know, a player could have easily stepped on that pad wrong, uh, and a, a wolf or a nugget, and it could cause serious injury. You can't do that in the flow of play. It's ridiculous. They need to send a message. A fine ain't going to do it. Sit his ass down. That's all, man. Also, so we have, I, I don't understand the route. So first off, Anthony Edwards should be shooting probably at least 50% more free, free throws than he does. Like He, he doesn't get the SGA win, uh, whistle. He doesn't get the Embiid whistle. Uh, he He's the only superstar who doesn't get a superstar whistle. It's BS. And also, so he, he got a tee the other night, which got rescinded because it was stupid. And also, he got teed up again on monday night which is just it's ridiculous man so uh so the denver coach can just piss and moan all he wants get get up in the face like he, he's a baseball manager but uh, not, nothing happened but ant could look at a defender weird and all of a sudden oh that's t we need to think about the children shut up so so ridiculous man but i mean the wolves i mean 
again, I fully admit that I'm uh, a warm weather, or no, fair weather, warm weather too, fair weather, Johnny come lately, bandwagon Wolves fan. Now, love the Wolves growing up, you know, KG, Tom Gugliotta, uh, Terrell Brandon, Sam Cassell, uh, Latrell Sprewell, obviously, era, but Wolves fans had to put up with some very, very bad basketball for a long time, and I, I, I respect you. And I, I love that you're getting to enjoy this. Uh, so thank you for l- allowing me to enjoy just a, a, a little bit with with you too, because it, this is we don't we don't get many moments like this in Minnesota sports. Uh, but you know, like I said, Jokic was an absolute blender, the the alleged MVP w- without w- without Gobert, because I, I feel like this team is so tight knit that they're like Rudy, we got you, and this entire game was just an homage. Where, so it, it's tough to play lockdown defense all 82 games, long ass season, but playoff mentality, they're fighting every screen, every switch, every fake, every dribble, like they are fighting you tooth and nail. Denver, and just like the Suns in the last series, cannot get a clean look at the basket. And they had three quarters tonight where they had 20 points or less, which is just as I cough and die. uh, Is that you run? They they had 15 points in the second quarter. And Jokic was extremely inefficient. Yeah, 16-16, but he looked dog-ass tired again, just like game one. He was 5 of 13 shooting. Uh, Murray was in a blender. Uh, Gordon was inefficient too. So, I mean, it was just rough all the way around. And for the Wolves, I mean, so Edwards didn't get 40. (laughs) But he still looked really damn good, 27 and 12. Um, actually, that, that's incorrect. 27 and 7. Nailed it. 7 assists on 11 of 17 shooting. And Edwards is so good at the heat check. Like, he understands, like, the flow and momentum of the game. And he, he knows that the game isn't played on spreadsheets. Like, Edwards will take and hit shots that just completely squash the fight remaining in an opponent. And I, I love that killer instinct. I mean, MJ obviously had that. Kobe had that. Just the unconsciousness of taking some of the shots that he does at the right time. Like, he doesn't just put up bad shots to put up bad shots. Well, ge- generally he doesn't. Uh, but he, he knows exactly when he can rip out the opponent's heart. And it's great. Man. Like, th- that three hit over Jokic, his only three of the night just completely just deflated. It was over. Well, it was over, but then it was over, over, right? Uh, and Cat, uh, I feel like Cat nationally doesn't doesn't get his flowers. He doesn't get his respect. And, you know, Towns, especially in uh, Towns, his rebounding in the Suns series was really unheralded and was a big factor in them uh, uh, eclipsing the sun. But, you know, 27 points tonight, 20 in the first half. I uh, had 12 boards as well. Uh, also, 10 to 15 shooting, 3 of 5 from 3, and was just... It was a hell of a good cat game. Plus, you know, the fact that he was drawing Jokic throughout most of the night as well. I mean, the, the fact that he still put up that a huge performance. It's one of the best games that Carl Anthony Towns has had. Mm. Also, McDaniels and Kyle Anderson. Uh, Anderson in the starting lineup. And basically, they were helping harass Jokic. And they were just completely getting after things. And so, there's so many players on this team that do the dirty work. They do small things that don't show up in the box score. They don't show up for fantasy basketball. They don't show up for for anyone except for they know that it's going to help the team win. And you have to give so much props to Finch uh, and also Mike Inori, who's hilarious, by the way, uh, for getting this team to buy in because this team was in shambles at the end of last year. I mean, pushing and shoving in the, in the huddle. Uh, McDaniels punching a wall for whatever reason. And the fact that this team goes eight, nine deep, and Edwards is a star, yes. Towns is a star, yes. Gobert is the best defense center in the game, yes. But on any given night, Nas Reed, Naw, McDaniels, Kyle Anderson to a degree, Conley can, can step up and just be the true talisman and get things done. And they're all good with that. Like what, Whatever it takes, this team is completely dialed in. This is a team, which is extremely rare in the NBA. I mean, with, with the, the whole super team motif and ethos. Now it's like, it's a loose collection of 1099 individuals. It's all individual corporations, but 
I mean, th- this team is special, man. Yeah. Also, Conley, six assists, and again, did so many damn things good. Also, what have you heard of a point guard not having any turnovers? Which is fantastic. Also, a Na and Nas Reed with 14 each off the bench is just on any given night, anyone can step up. It's great. Just unselfish basketball, making the extra pass, team defense, communication, not giving an inch of space, and this is Wolves basketball right now. And like you could tell, like, I mean, the there was a lot of people who lost faith when the Wolves sort of nosedive at the end of the regular season. And it made sense. I mean, the Wolves were trying to go wire to wire basically as the one seed, and they faltered, ended up three seed. But Finch knew. Finch understands that, hey, get your mind right or I'll get it right for you or start peeking at the right time. And they experimented with different rotations. Edwards was sort of traipsing down towards the end of the season, but he's obviously dialed in now. And this is what it's about. Ten more wins, and you get it. Ten more wins. And, you know, we said the, this series is going to be a war. Like, I'm still not counting out the Nuggets. That it's still going to be tough as hell. The Wolves cannot take them lightly, uh, even with the series returning to Minneapolis. But the winner of this series is going to win the whole thing. And I still firmly believe that, man. So I, I, I love it. And, you know, they head back to the Wolves' den, Target Center, uh, on Friday night, go, probably going to go for the sweep on Sunday, baby. And uh, again, I, I understand Minnesota sports always look for what's going to go wrong. Always look for the banana peel. Always look for you know the glass being half empty. Just allow yourself to dream just a little bit. But again, one game at a time. Ten more wins get you the biscuit. No risk it, no biscuit. Come on, baby. Come on, man. But uh, your thoughts are thoughts. The Wolves go into Denver and just completely tax that ass. They whoop that ass and just (laughs) Uh, let us know in the comment section below. You guys are the best. You know what to do. Skull production value.